He's a hustler, unbreakable, a people's person, and a future billionaire. This is the Hustler's Corner with Smoothie Soliope, well known to you and I as DJ Smooth. Hey, hello, hustlers. Welcome to the Hustlers Corner. This is DJ Smooth straight out of Johannesburg in South Africa. And I'm excited because we have teamed up with 360 Global Solutions, which is a conglomerate group of companies. And I'm excited that one of their subsidiaries, or let me say um, their chairman um, from the executive team has committed 400,000 to about 20 small businesses. And I'm excited today because uh, we're sitting down with one of the uh, COVID business saver recipients and he owns this brand. Um, I don't want to call it a brand. I don't want to call it a company. He'll tell us the entire story. I'm looking forward to hearing more about it. Welcome to the Hustlers Corner. Just go and click that shop shop sign on the count of one, two, three. Click, 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 click. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to bring or welcome Hustler Extraordinaire uh, and um, owner of uh, Oxygen Trailers, Mr. Tabo. How are you doing, sir? I'm good. How are you? I know. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Good, I'm blessed. Good. I'm blessed. Thank you very much for having us here. Thank you for being here. Thank I you think... so much for thinking about us. No, thank you. I, I think um, I'm looking forward to listening to the story. I mean, I just want to hear the story. What pushed you into starting your own small business? And what does the business entail? Um, how did you get into business? Uh, okay, my name is Dhabo Mzuli. I'm the founder of this company, Oxygen Failures. Actually, I've always been selling things all my life, since primary school, high school. I was raised in a family of working class parents, normal class parents. They had ordinary jobs and all that, but I didn't want to go through that route, yes. I tried other things before school and all that, but yeah, throughout my life I knew that no, I had to, to be self-employed. So this company, it was founded after a lot of disappointments on my side. I tried to get involved in sports, events and things like that. What so, were you doing? What type of events? I uh, will go to sports events and try and provide catering, food trailers, things like that, stage trailers. So most of the time it's either we'll hire out equipment from other companies, which was extremely expensive, very, very expensive, or whatever that we purchased, it wasn't in the right quality. It wasn't very user friendly. Most of the time we'll purchase things that are below standards, not manufactured to, according to the required standards. So it was disappointments after disappointments. We saw a gap in the market, then yeah, I took it. So where, where were you working at the time? Uh, I've moved around. I started working for a big gym company as a salesperson. I did very, very, very well there. I used to clap my targets all the time. Then so I you moved. were what, a gym instructor? No, not a gym instructor, so oh, sales salesperson, yeah. sorry, sorry. Sales person, yeah. Then I moved into teaching. Actually, I got a scholarship to go into teaching and all that. Yeah, I did it because I wanted to go to university and then there was no other way. But yeah, I went through that route, went and studied a BCom sports management, then yeah. Oh, where did you study? Sports management. Okay. UJ. Oh, you went to UJ? Yeah. Oh, wow, that's interesting. Um, I mean, I went to UJ, well, I went to Vets Tech, which Vets became Tech. UJ, but before it became UJ, I went to, I went to Vets Tech as well. Um, and, 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 and it's quite interesting that you, you ended up in entrepreneurship, you know? It's not easy to start a small business. Um, you're saying you saw a gap in the market. I did. Tell me more. Uh, <clears throat> In this industry, this is manufacturing industry, it's mostly dominated by family-owned companies, third, fourth generation owners of the same companies and all that. So yeah, it's very rare to find our African brothers in this kind of industry. If you find them, they are manufacturing things that are not up to standards and all that. So I had to take that gap and manufacture things that are above the required standards and specifications of the SABS and the Department of Transport. So we had to 
go in that direction but it's it's not an easy field it's not an easy industry to get into it's very difficult because it requires a lot of capital you need to inject a lot of your own money but yeah we are here today um so did you have to inject your own money as well yes big time a lot of sacrifices <laughs> were made here. a lot of money i I had to inject a lot of money, a lot of my own money, because you can't start a business without obviously having so much faith on yourself. I had to put in a lot of money, a lot, a lot, a lot of my own money that started this business. So yeah, I had to make that sacrifice. You can't come and help me out while there's nothing from my side. So. And this is one man? This is one man. It's it's been a very bumpy road very tough but yeah when you're saying bumpy and tough i'd like to hear those challenges let's share uh we have got challenges when it comes to registering our products with the sabs and the department of transport everyone who dealt with the department of transport in that level because we are registered as an automobile manufacturer so we need to go through rigorous tests rigorous you write tests, actually proper exams, you go and study, come, you get tested on your technical knowledge and all that, if you'll be able to manufacture according to the required standards. So you really need to apply yourself, not only financially, but mentally as well and technically. So yeah, the, our main challenge is we're getting all the required uh, registrations in order before we started manufacturing because most of these units they move around on national roads and all that they need to be manufactured according to the standards that are safe for everyone on the roads yeah to protect everyone on our so what does um oxygen trailers manufacture you just do trailers Oxygen trailers manufactures anything that is mobile if you want to convert anything make it mobile we manufacture it mobile trailers mobile fridges mobile toilets mobile coffee shops stage trailers advertising trailers we just make anything to be mobile so anyone who's watching out there who might be wanting any of those services they can hit you guys up they can hit us up they can go to our website www.oxygentrailers.co.za O eight two six nine six nine seven eight five. We do manufacture according to the client specifications. We'll cut you according to your specifications. We'll make your brand mobile. And I want to know about the the journey of this business. How how long have you been running it, and where is it going? This business I started it around two thousand and sixteen. It was informally. Obviously, I'll manufacture here, and they all ask other companies to register my products. And then twenty nineteen. I stopped most of the side hustles I was doing, wrapped up everything, took the chunk of whatever that I had sold, put it into this business, then we are here now. So you had another business before this one? I had other businesses. Even currently, I do other things on the side. Mm -hmm. I'm involved in construction. I'm involved in meat trading. I trade with meeting things. <laughs> yeah, my in Kuku. All that. I'm, 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 I'm always hustling. So, <laughs> yeah, so I had to sell some of the things because before I had another business, a takeaway shop, I had to sell it, took the money, and then invested the money in this. And we can even plug the, the, the takeaway business as well. How do we find the chicken? Is it a brand or we, you don't have to promote no, it? No, the chicken is not a brand. I don't really need to promote it because I got it somewhere. I'm the middle man. Got it somewhere. I store it. Then I distribute. And if the minister of small business is watching right now, yeah. Omam Lady Rizul, what would you like to say to her? Uh, I'll say this to most government departments. I don't think we are being supported enough as small businesses. The reason why I say so, most of the time, big business goes to huge companies and all that. We are capable. I'd like to say to them, please, guys, inject capital on us. We really need a lot of things as it is now. We still need a lot of machinery. So, yeah, even if we are not given money as in cash, but help us acquire equipment that we'll need to grow our businesses. But have you applied though in um, these industrial industrialist programs of the I've government? applied. There's still no responses and all that. Yes, they acknowledged that they did receive our applications, but so far, yeah, we are still waiting.
and what's the future for oxygen trailers? Uh, oxygen trailers, actually, we are going to go into huge trailers, the interlinks and all that. I'll be going to Europe next year if all is safe and it's clear to do a course. And then when I come back, we'll try move on to interlink trucks and all that because we we are registered. We are allowed to manufacture those interlink trucks, but we need to obviously acquire more knowledge on that department. And how has COVID-19 affected your business? Uh, before COVID-19, we had a, a few clients that were giving us businesses here and there on a random basis and all that. Engineering uh, companies were coming through and then, yeah, because we were putting our work out there and then the generator manufacturers, distributors were coming through. The issue now is most of them were affected by COVID, so they couldn't carry on with other businesses that were on the pipeline with us. So we had to freeze everything up until everyone is financially stable to, to carry on with their normal activities. That's incredible. And um, I just want to say congratulations for the 20,000 rands. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We really, really, really needed this. Yeah, you, you must say thank you to 360. <laughs> thank you to 360. Thank you to Babu Kandani Msibi. I was watching that interview. You really, 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 really did the work for us. Thank you so much to you. Too. No, that's beautiful, man. I really appreciate it. Babu Msibi is one of those people who've always been open to entrepreneurs. His door has always been open, even for myself and um, Uspiwe when we started Mofaya. Just the mentoring through, and at some point, they've really, really, I, 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 can't, I can't mention how many times he's guided us yeah. for our business to be where it is today, being more fire. I'm happy when he, he gets himself out there for more other entrepreneurs than ourselves, because I was always like, no, we need gentlemen like him to be publicly out there speaking for us entrepreneurs. And I think he has become that voice, especially on Twitter. So thank you very much, sir. We really appreciate you. And thank you very much to the Exco team and everyone at 360 Global Solutions and everybody that's affiliated with the group of companies. What you guys are doing is totally amazing for entrepreneurs. And it's good to hear um, Tabo say that. Now, what I want to know is how will the 20,000 rands um, save this business? Uh it's actually very straightforward because during the lockdown we were forced to, to carry on paying for the premises which is expenses for other things we've got other expenses that we incurred during the lockdown we couldn't really cover them up because we're not operating no money was coming in and all that so the first things we'll do we actually we need to cover up our rent that's the main thing and then yeah we'll get our marketing bills back into order, advertising things, and then, yeah, we try and kick it again. No, I just want to say congratulations to you. And once again, um, thank you. I wish you a great future and a bright future with um, Oxygen Trailers and all your other business ventures. And as we close it off, um, what is the future for Tabo in business? Do you want to end up only in, do you want to grow in manufacturing or you'd like to explore other things as the world is changing to um, the digital space? Yeah. I'm going to stick around a bit in manufacturing. I want to grow this business to to certain levels, to a billion dollar business, let me say that. Yeah. And then, yeah, I'll see, I'll take it from there. But my attention, I'm giving it all to this business. I want to grow it into a big manufacturing house. So you are hands-on? I am hands-on. Currently with how many employees? We have got four employees. But obviously they come in three days a week. The reason being, obvious, we are not that much busy at the moment, so we had to make them come 50%. If there's potential investors that are watching out there, are you open to that? We are very much open, we are very much open, but yeah, the investors need to know I'll still be hands on big time. We will appreciate an investor will come invest, and be a silent partner and stand on their corner there. I believe I've got the right skills, I've got the right management skills to take this business in the right direction. Okay, so do you think, um, <coughs> excuse me, I know a lot of people are interested in, um, in manufacturing and a lot of, a lot of people who probably, let me not say I know a lot of people who've got money. Mm. I know a lot of people 
<laughs> but I know some people yeah. who probably might have money who might be interested in, 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 in putting in some money in a business like this. You never know with investors where they're interested to put their money yeah. into, you know? So that's why I always ask these type of questions to trigger somebody out there or somebody's uncle. They're probably watching there on YouTube and they're like, oh, okay, let, let's hit that guy up. Maybe we can, um, are you guys on so, online? Do you have a website, social media? Where do we find you? We've got a website, www.oxygentrailers.co.za. We are on Twitter, we are on Facebook, we're on Facebook. So yeah, if there's an investor out there, feel free. We are open to, to all the investors. Tabum Vili, thank you very much. This has been the Hustlers Corner. We appreciate your time and we wish you all the best with your business. Thank you so much. Thank you to the Hustlers Corner. Thank you to you, personal DJ Swo. You are always that kind of a guy that we look up to. Thank you no, so much. I appreciate it. And lastly, I'm going to let you look at that camera. The type of guy that you're going to be in the next couple of years, this business is going to be a very big business. You're going to be so hands-on that you're going to grow this business into a multi-billion dollar business, not just rents. Because the space that you're in is very, very big. You are that guy now. This has become such a big business. You worth so much money. You look back on all the hard work. This is 10 years from today. This is 2030. Look in that camera. What would you like to say to that man who's sitting on the other side of the camera? This is 10 years from today. Don't stop. Don't stop. Keep pushing. No matter how hard it is, give it your all. Thank you very much, Mr. Tabum Zuli. Thank you. Guys, please like, share, subscribe. Let everybody else know about the Hustlers Corner. For everybody else that wants to enter this competition, very easy. It's open until the end of August 2020. How do you enter? You record yourself a one to two minutes video telling us about your business, telling us how COVID-19 has affected your business, and telling us how the 20,000 rands from 360 Global Solutions is going to save your business. And then from there, you post it on all your social media platforms. Make sure that you use the three hashtags that you see at the bottom of the screen hashtag 360 life hashtag dj swoo and hashtag covid biz saver that's covid biz saver thank you very much guys depending the we try and fit it and do it as professional as possible as you can see we fit in the gas lifts the same ones that you use on vehicles, bar keys, and things like that. Professional done according to the standards. Mm -hmm. And, and you what is that? Uh, and then what's the difference between that and that? Which? That and that. Oh, okay. This is the fryer. It's fried. It's a gas fryer and all that mm -hmm. kind of thing. And then this is a boiler. It's a normal stove. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, you can see the way even our chip cutter is fitted professionally here. Mm -hmm. It's so stable, no injuries and all that. Yeah, the gas fittings are done professionally. We buy all all our suppliers are SABS approved. So all our equipment is manufactured using SABS approved uh, materials. Still. No. Actually, I need to buy my mom this one too, you know? And you have to put the order and we'll sort you out. So I, I, I can get a, um, cause my mom loves cooking and my mom, my mom has always been a business woman, you know, I'm thinking of starting maybe, maybe some partner at home, I guess I get to be some kind of CV, some I get foods. <laughs> no, but this is nice. So. Hi, I'm Tabum Lule, I'm the founder of Oxygen Trailers. I'd like to say thank you to 360 Global Solutions Thank you to the 360 Global Solutions marketing team. Thank you to DJ Spoo. Thank you to the Hustlers Corner. I've been hustled by DJ Spoo on the Hustlers Corner.